Hello, thank you for joining me today on the channel as I take on a new enemy. Uh, something a little bit different than the usual, uh, Chainsaw Man. Also, my name is Am, and I go by Film Buff here on the channel. Uh, so hello to any new people that might show up. And I'm sure there might be uh, some new people that show up. So, uh, of course, thank you for joining me. You know, so check it out. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's not for you. But, you know, uh, thank you for stopping by nonetheless. Now, let's get right into it, folks. Uh, Chainsaw Man. Yes, yes. You know, some of you might know that, you know, I've been planning this for months at this point. For some of you, it might be quite a surprise, right? This might be the first time you're realizing that I'm actually doing this on the channel. Now, you know, no one recommended this to me. Nope. Uh, nothing like that. It, it kind of happened organically on Twitter one day, right? Uh, I was on Twitter and then I saw that this this was kind of trending, right? Uh, and it was the first trailer. Uh, essentially, it, it had just dropped, uh, like it was 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and I checked it out, right? And I checked it out and I was kind of hooked in, right? Uh, it was fascinating, that trailer. It really hooked me in, you know? And you have to give them great credit because... Trailers one and two, I didn't go any further than that. I didn't check out anything beyond trailer number two. That was my favorite. Trailer two is one of my all-time favorites, actually. Recent favorites, for sure. That is how you do a trailer. That is how you hook someone in who has no clue about the anime or the story. But, you know, that really got me, right? The approach, the tone, the art direction, right? Um, the score, the music that was being used um, in the trailer. And now, you know, I'm hoping it's a similar type of score that's being utilized in the anime as well, because the, the trailer music, and if you know the name of that track uh, that's in the first half of that trailer, trailer number two, please let me know. That is just, wow, it is perfect. But yeah, you know, it really got me, you know, it hooked me. It really did. Um, so yeah, you know, uh, I saw those trailers and I was like, okay, I need to check this out. And of course, this gives me the perfect chance to actually lean into something new, right? You know, uh, up until this point, I've been kind of living in the past in terms of the anime I was covering on the channel. Uh, stuff that's already kind of aired uh, years ago, uh, you know, a decade ago. Some not so old, you know, Vinland Saga is uh, actually much more recent. And Shingeki, um, you know, I started Shingeki a long time ago on the channel. Um, but yeah, you know, here in Chainsaw Man, I have the chance to kind of do something as it releases. Um, I felt like the channel needed that, you know. Uh, so here I am. Here I am. You know, I feel like it's a perfect mix of something I'm really kind of interested in. And it's something new as well, right? So it's it's perfect. So I'm kind of working towards, um, you know, some new anime and a mix of some older anime. And, you know, as you've seen, as many of you have seen, uh, it's quite the watch list, right? Uh, anyone can check out the watch list on patreon.com. It's just on the homepage. You don't have to be a patron to check it out. So, of course, if you are new to the channel, check out the watch list. That's all the anime I still want to get to, right? Um, but yeah, you know, um, in terms of similar uh, anime, um, you know, off screen, I've been checking out Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah, I've got to say, it's been surprisingly entertaining. You know, I've kind of been hooked, if I'm being honest. You know, there is something addictive about that, right? I think as an off-screen anime, it's been uh, so enjoyable, really. You know, I, I watched the first episode months ago, but, you know, I recently moved and, you know, I, I was just kind of having a meal and I kind of just put on Crunchyroll and I thought, eh, you know, let me continue Jujutsu Kaisen. I found myself binging like three or four episodes, right? Really enjoyable, really enjoyable characters, really likable characters uh, in that show, in that anime. Yes, you know, maybe the plot isn't uh, my cup of tea, but, you know, it kind of grows on you. It does. But the characters, wow, you know, they really, yeah, they really excel. But now that I do have some episodes uh, of Jujutsu Kaisen under my belt, you know, looking back at it, yeah, there's some similarities to the trailer of Chainsaw Man, right? I know it's a bit off topic, but I'm really enjoying Jujutsu Kaisen. You know, I'm really looking forward to um, finishing that season and then checking out the, the movie. I think it's called Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen Zero. Um, but yeah, you know, you know, if there's interest down the line, you know, I could see myself maybe kind of jumping into season two, uh, doing content for season two down the line. Um, I don't know. You know, give me your thoughts in the comments. As of this point, I'm really enjoying Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen as an off-screen anime, right? Um, it's good to it's good to have those kind of shows to, as well, right? Not everything has to be content. Now let's get back to Chainsaw Man. Uh, now before I get into the episode itself, 
Um, I do offer it full length on Patreon. Uh, of course, it is a timer-based full length. You bring your own copy, you know, set up Crunchyroll, and I'll do a countdown, and then you hit play at the same time, perfectly synced. And there's also full opacity because, of course, you know, on YouTube, you do have to be careful. So I do apply a mask um, because otherwise, you know, anime is tricky. It's actually quite a scary prospect uh, given how things have gone down for others on YouTube. So, yeah, you know, I try to be really careful on YouTube, but, you know, uh, on Patreon, you can access uh, high quality 4K um, uploaded uh, exclusively on Vimeo. Um, you know, there's not that much compression on Vimeo, so I really like using that. Um, yeah, so, you know, consider checking that out. If you're interested, the links are in the description, the pinned comment. Also, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, uh, if that's your thing. Right then, I think that's about it. Uh, you know, actually, you know, Fujimoto, I've been hearing a lot about Fujimoto recently. You know, a lot of recommendations uh, for his one shot. But yeah, you know, uh, it appears that he's uh, a generational talent. Right. So, yeah, you know, I'm taking interest in Fujimoto. In fact, you know, uh, that's the one I grabbed. Um, look back. So, yeah, you know, I'll be checking that out uh, once I get a chance. But, yeah, you know, I'm excited to learn more about Fujimoto and his process, his storytelling, his approach to storytelling, uh, you know, consume more of his media. Right. Beginning with Chainsaw Man. And then, you know, I'll check out this uh, one shot. I'll look back. And then, of course, you know, I'll look into some of the other stuff as well. Uh, but, yeah, let's get right into it. I hope you enjoy. Wow, look at this, look at this. Ah, dream sequence, okay. Ah, like a great shot from the trailer. Wow, wow. <laughs> the cute little bark. Wow, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's gotta get you something. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, this is right up my alley, man. This presentation. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so it is it is kind of similar to Jujutsu Kaisen as well, right? Some of the plot elements. That was a great opening. I, I need to go through that. Clearly a lot of uh, film references. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, it's not gonna... Less than 100k. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so he owes a lot of money. But he's quite young, though. Oh. That's not much at all, is it? Ah, that adds up, right? Sins of the father. <laughs> I need the backstory on that little dog, chainsaw dog, Pochta. Nicely done. <laughs> and the tail is like a ripcord. Mm, another one from the trailer. <laughs> Why? Already, you know, you, I'm becoming attached to this guy. <laughs> no, me too short now, man. You're quite the cool fellow. Yeah, maybe not that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the animation is top notch here, man. Ooh, okay. Jeez, man. Wow. This is cinematic as hell, man. This is so up my alley. I'm loving these shots. The photography here is just top notch. 
Ah, uh, is this the, the faithful meeting? No, I think it maybe came to him in his time of need. Oh. Okay, so that's how they bond. Wow, the score. Yes, yes. Wow. Immediately. <laughs> Deal with the devil. A lot of low perspective, low angle shots. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Simple things. Yeah. Ah. And I'm loving the look, the tone of it. Ah. Um, the color grading, the color, the color palette. And these backgrounds, of course. Look at these backgrounds. Oh man. In the middle of. Fuck. Yeah, you know the moment you drive up to a place like this, something's off. To a fault. Oh! Oh! The fuck? Looks like a zombie. Shh. <laughs> the music from the trailer. A bit of it. The zombie devil. God damn. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say simple things. He dreams of simple things. Jeez, this is raw as fuck, folks. Uh, they're not holding back. Oh my god. Yeah. Ah. So start a potsta daki ga kokoro no kori da. The bond, though. Oh, God, is, is he gonna end up eating his remains? That's from the trailer. Ah. Okay. Okay. Loving the score. Ah. Wow. Oh, my God. Whoa. Nice. Wow! He can talk? I think it's a surprise for him as well. Or is this like in his head? Because mm. they've kind of fused, right? So they're a part of each other now. Whoa! Ah, the ripcord. Is that how he transforms? Oh my god, I'm about to see it! I'm about to see it! But that's interesting though. Let's go! Let's go! It's about to be a bloodbath, isn't it? Killing frenzy. Carnage. It's coming! It's coming! It's a great reveal! I guess he transformed under. Let's go. That is raw as fuck, man. So bizarre, but hella cool. Slice and dice. Go on, then.
Oh god. The bloodlust. Wow. So calm and serene. Quite the transition, right? From that bloodbath. Ah, okay, that's in this episode. So it looks like a lot of the stuff from the, the trailer, trailer number two specifically, is from the first episode. It has a great shot coming up right here. Yes. And it's her. That's the one. That's the money shot right there. <laughs> Imagine walking into that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Mix of both. Hybrid. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, look at her. <laughs> mm. Join us or. It's an interesting uh, dynamic here, isn't it? <laughs> to him, that's all he needs, man. That's... Wow. His savior. Hey, yo, okay. Great pilot, great pilot. Um, that kind of flew by. And yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that, of course. And, you know, right from the beginning, it was like right up my alley. You know, immediate film references popping up, you know, really quick. Uh, but, you know, I caught... Uh, the Pulp Fiction, you know, Jules, the bad motherfucker. Um, there's one for No Country for Old Men. Antoine on the bed, right? Uh, there's, um, there's a quick one from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, right? Um, yeah, a lot of cool stuff there. Reservoir Dogs, uh, The Big Lebowski. Um, this is great. This is great. But yeah, it doesn't look like there's uh, a visual ending for this one. So maybe that's in episode two. Maybe it's a separate thing that I could maybe check out on YouTube or... But yeah, yeah. Okay, episode one of Chainsaw Man. Yeah, yeah, I've got to say that was uh, quite the enjoyable, quite the efficient, quite the effective introduction to this, this story, this anime. Uh, quite the effective introduction of characters, and specifically our boy Denji, right? <laughs> you know, I'm already calling him uh, our boy or my boy Denji um, because, wow, <laughs> I mean, you cannot help but, you know, kind of root for this young adult, this young man, this teenager. Um, and, you know, I feel like it, it was such a great introduction because it kept it simple, right? Uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a simple concept. It's a simple concept. And I, I felt that, you know, it was effectively and efficiently set up, right? And I think there was some great use of backstory and flashback. But, you know, at the end there, uh, there is yet another character introduction, isn't there? You know, this savior figure, this goddess figure almost, if you're looking at it from Denji's perspective. And I'm speaking of the red-haired uh, lady or girl that came in, right? Uh, I don't have a name yet, but, you know, she's prominently featured in the trailer. Um, she's kind of hard to miss, you know, quite a striking look, um, quite, you know, an attractive look. Um, she's an interesting one. She's an interesting one for sure, right? Uh, certainly more than meets the eye. And you're speaking of these eyes, you know, that devilish look, you know, quite a distinct look. I mean, the eyes um, specifically. Right. Uh, a lot of interesting lines of dialogue here. You know, if I decide to keep you, uh, I'll make sure you're fed. Right. Uh, as if he's a dog. Right. Now, you know, that being said, there is a shot. Uh, I suppose it's more of a symbolic shot. 
uh, in the opening, right? It's Denji on a leash. <laughs> and it's her. You know, she's got Denji on a leash. Now, you know, that's perhaps, uh, you know, symbolic uh, in terms of the potential relationship that I'm about to see, right? Uh, a master and puppet type thing, a master and slave type thing, a master and dog type thing going on here. But, you know, also, she's also literally feeding him something in that opening, right? Uh, some sort of parasite, some sort of snail, two-headed snail. So, you know, there's that as well, you know, literally feeding him something. Again, I'm not sure if that's symbolic, if that is alluding to something down the line, uh, some kind of psychedelic but yeah, you know, I think her introduction is really quite effective here in the conclusion of uh, the pilot uh, of the first episode. Um, I think, you know, through that introduction uh, and just through the character design and the things she is saying and observing, um, there's some great uh, exposition, right? Um, I mean, you can infer and kind of gather or, you know, extract um, some things out of this. Right, she's clearly quite good, quite effective at her job. Right, uh, you know, a, a professional devil hunters essentially, or she is a, a professional devil hunter. Right, part of an organization um, that does this on a professional level. Right, and now our boy Denji has been recruited. Uh, but yeah, you know, she was able to see that he's not possessed. Right, and she she could even smell it. She could smell something uh, was off, was different, right? That he's not quite human and he's not quite devil, right? Uh, yes, he's a hybrid, uh, quite rare in that sense. Um, and I feel like our red-haired uh, character here uh, understands and realizes this. I think she can tell that this is something special and this is something she can utilize, right? So. I don't think she's without an agenda. You know, yes, on one end, she has this calming and soothing presence, right? Um, uh, you know, she, there's this whole, you know, lap pillow moment that's going on. I mean, you could tell already that she's able to calm Denji down. I think one thing that is clear is that there is about to be an interesting relationship here, right? Denji and the unnamed character that kind of enters his life and is about to kind of change it forever. Right, give or at least give him a chance to change it forever, right? Um, but you know, I don't think it's as simple as, oh, okay, you know, this sweet lady, uh, this sweet girl, um, is going to be the savior figure. But, you know, one of the most definitive setups of this episode is the bleak nature, uh, the cruel nature of the world, uh, of this anime, of this story, right? The cold uh, and unforgiving nature. So yeah, I don't think it's as simple and boring as, you know, just a savior figure coming into his life. You know, yes, the opportunity is there now for him to kind of, you know, potentially climb out of all of this and have these new experiences, right? Uh, much needed new experiences and experiences that this young man deserves, right? Growth, potential growth that he deserves, that he was kind of um, robbed of a childhood. Uh, he was robbed of because he was born into this hell, right? You know, his reality, his situation, it's not of his own doing. He was born into this hell. He was burdened with uh, the sins of his father. I mean, no one gave a shit about Denji, right? He was used. He was manipulated, uh, exploited all of his life. Uh, he had just the one and only friend, right? Pochta. <laughs> you know, because of that chance encounter, uh, yet also it kind of felt like a faithful encounter as well, right? That it was meant to be, you know, that these two beings of quite the small stature kind of came together and because of each other, right, they, they were kind of able to fight back and keep their heads above that level, that drowning level. And it came about because Denji kind of saw an opening there, right? An opportunity there, uh, made a, he made a contract. Right? And I saw that twice in this episode. You know, I see Denji and uh, Pochta make a contract. Um, and then I saw, you know, the bearded Yakuza man uh, make a contract, uh, a deal with the devil, essentially, right? Uh, the, the zombie devil <laughs> in, in this case. So that's certainly a thing, you know. Um, from one end, 
uh, you bring in these devil hunters to kind of eliminate the threat. And then on the other end, there's also this, uh, you know, possibility, this notion of actually making some sort of deal with these devils, a contract, right? And, you know, that's it. You know, Denji saw the opening, right? You see that quick flash of his father um, and he realizes, okay, this might be the break I need, right? But it's like a mutually beneficial uh, arrangement. Right, because Pochta is uh, in rough condition, right? Perhaps uh, it was going to die if this uh, if this doesn't go down. So, you know, uh, that's how it begins. And I've got to say, you know, I like that much better than my initial take on the matter. I thought maybe Pochta came to him in his moment of need, in his time of need, right? Since Pochta is technically this supernatural thing, right? This devil. So I thought maybe you know, Pochta might be something unique, something a little bit different, right? But no, you know, it's actually a bit more realistic how I played out, right? It was, you know, it was a contract, it was a deal, but then of course, over time, there's that bond, there's that chemistry, you know, there's that heart to all of this. But, you know, kind of circling back to the initial point about Denji kind of moving on to the next phase of his life uh, and having that chance uh, to grow, Right, to be around people, um, to have that emotional growth that he was robbed of. Um, you know, th that thought is certainly exciting. And, you know, I got a taste of it in the opening. It was great to see all of them together, right? And I'm really excited to see these other characters that I saw in the, in the opening. Uh, it is such a fantastic opening. You know, all those film references. So, you know, that makes me even more excited. Uh, clearly, you know, the, the creator, Fujimoto, is quite the film buff himself, right? Um, because, you know, you're not, you're not putting in all of these references um, just because he felt like it. Clearly, you know, this is out of the love of cinema from the looks of it. But yeah, I saw a few more of them in the trailers. Uh, so I'm really quite excited to uh, see these characters, right? Uh, get my official introduction to them. And I'm guessing most likely it's about to be in the second episode, right? But, you know, all of that being said, you know, the, the potential to exploit, to use, to manipulate Denji, it remains, it remains, right? Um, and I think, you know, this red-haired girl, I, I think she she really understands that, you know, there is something quite unique about this individual. So yeah, you know, on one end, I'm happy for Denji, and on another end, I still have concern, right? That it's not, it's not just about to be smooth sailing. But, you know, speaking of Denji, the protagonist, isn't it so refreshing that, you know, his goals... Um, in his desires, you know, they're not these, you know, larger than life, earth shattering goals, right? Um, you know, that textbook protagonist uh, that you might find in an anime. No, this is just a young adult, a young man trying to survive, right? Um, he's got simple desires, uh, just the really simple things, right? And there is something so endearing about that. His upbeat disposition despite his troubles and uh, difficult life you know there is something so charming about that this dude <laughs> he was actually feeling guilty or the fact that you know he had these beautiful times with his one and only friend Pochta right they have their shack they had the bread right they had each other right he was feeling guilty that that it wasn't enough for him, that he wanted more. And he's right to want more. He is, right? He should. He should, uh, you know, want more. But, you know, uh, he felt so guilty. He felt like, you know, um, look at the situation now. I've lost Pochta, right? Uh, why couldn't I just be happy with the situation, right? It was a good situation. You know, the selflessness of that thought is just so touching, isn't it? You know, this dude feels like he had everything he needed, right? That it was more than enough as long as he had Pochta. I think Fujimoto has given this story a fantastic protagonist uh, to follow, right? I think, you know, Denji is both empathetic uh, and sympathetic. You know, he has this innate likability, but you see it clearly, right? The storytelling elements are really utilized to great effect here that by the end of this, he has left his old world, right? Uh, and, you know, somehow he, he cobbled together a semblance of a life, right? Somehow he managed 
but you see that he's taken his first steps into the new world, right? Uh, his new world, that is. And, you know, I feel like this is about to provide uh, the narrative imperative for uh, his potential metamorphosis, right? Uh, and then I think that is about to create, or that journey is about to create the, the spine of this plot. And I think that journey is also about to be uh, a reflection of Denji's psychological arc as well. So, you know, I, I think there's actually a lot of great potential here. And of course, you know, uh, Denji's climb out of the proverbial dumps, right? And you see that, that one shot of his rebirth, right? It's actually his rebirth, isn't it? Uh, in, you know, in the dumpster. Uh, that is quite the, uh, quite the symbolic moment, isn't it? Uh, and then, you know, up the, the ladder. Uh, towards self-actualization, right? You know, it's a long, it's a long ladder, right? A lot of rungs on that ladder. And, you know, he was certainly at the bottom, at the bottom rung at the start of this. But, you know, slowly he is starting to climb, right? And I'm here for this. I'm here for this. But, you know, I just mentioned the dumpster shot. Wow. Um, you know, Denji getting butchered, the dismemberment of Denji, and then being tossed aside like he's just garbage, that he's just trash. Wow, you know, there's a lot of striking imagery here. And, you know, I'm shocked that this is meant to be a shonen, right? This is, like I said a few times, they're not holding back. This is full of gore, as expected, given the title and given, you know, the, the, the just the plot of all of this, right? Chainsaw Man, <laughs> this, you know, demon, uh, god of destruction, essentially, uh, that has this bloodlust, right? Uh, surely you cannot... You know, you cannot have uh, a soft take on that. It has to be full of gore, right? And, you know, the, the creature design, grotesque in its detail. Like I said before, you know, a lot of similarities to Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, that also has some great creature design, right? Um, great detail. Uh, so, yeah, 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 you know. I don't mind it. I don't mind that they are really quite similar uh, in a sense, right? Uh, of course, there's some key differences there for sure. And, you know, speaking of some of these key differences there in Kaizen, in Jujutsu Kaizen, <laughs> uh, you know, these curses are essentially born uh, because of um, negative emotions and thoughts, right? Uh, a concentration of negative emotions or thoughts. But here it appears to be fear, right? These devils come into existence through fear from the looks of it, from the sounds of it. But yeah, you know, kind of go back to uh, the gore element of this, yeah, you know, the animation, wow, wow, wow. You know, that that one sequence of uh, the Chainsaw Man uh, kind of running through, um, the you know, the devil zombies, um, kind of just slashing, you know, left and right, and then, you know, jumping up uh, towards the devil uh, zombie king. That sequence was perhaps a standout. But yeah, you know, I think for the most part, um, before the Chainsaw Man showed up, right? And then the CGI was used for that element of it. I felt like most of that episode, it felt like a stylistic choice, right? That it was deliberate, you know, the movement. And, you know, in that sense, the direction of this episode is really quite the noticeable aspect as well, you know, quite the standout. And then of course, you know, it's a visually striking and stunning episode, right? And, you know, that was my hope uh, after watching the trailer. That was one of the things that hooked me in the first place. Uh, you know, all those things that really brought me in because of the trailer, all those elements are here. They're present, right? Um, so I'm super happy about that, right? Uh, the score, the, the original soundtrack, wow. Most impressive, one of the standouts. Um, you know, I found myself really kind of uh, sucked in, right? Uh, a lot of it felt like a bit of a, you know, melancholic, haunting score, right? Accompanying some of these really bleak and moody scenes. And, you know, I must admit, bleak and moody and, you know, uh, dark and just cold. All of those are kind of things that I really kind of look for and gravitate towards, uh, be it in film, in live action television, Right, uh, other forms of storytelling, be it you know gaming, manga, graphic novels, right, all of that, you know that that is right up my alley. I know it might sound a little bit crazy, but you know I find I find that to be kind of addictive, right? Drawn in, I'm drawn in by that, to that, uh, to that atmosphere, 
And like I mentioned, I'm really digging the color palette, the color grading, right? The tones, the moody tones, the muted tones um, of this anime so far. I think it fits in perfectly with the tone of this story, the bleak nature of this story. I, I feel like uh, something super colorful and, you know, um, uh, bombastic or flamboyant or explosive, I feel like that probably wouldn't have been uh, the right fit. In my opinion, at least, I think I think the approach that's taken here, um, it's the right approach, and it is so cinematic. And you see again, you know, that Fujimoto clearly has an eye uh, for you know cinematic uh, detail, cinematic uh, movement. Uh, you know, even some of the camera movements. Now I know, I guess that you know that credit has to go to the animation department and some of the other departments. Again, you know. Uh, I'm not that seasoned in anime terminology, you know, uh, production terminology just yet. But you know, the art direction, I felt that I felt that was a standout. Uh, again, you know, it was quite noticeable in the trailers. All of that, all of that is present here, right? So I was so happy about all of that. You know, that that dreary, cold, gray, cloudy, um, always rainy. Um, that look, you know, that tone. Uh, that atmosphere, I think that's perfect for this, right? Uh, even the city itself, you know, it's got that gray concrete jungle look. So yeah, you know, um, I'm quite the fan of the cinematic language of this anime so far. I really am. And of course, other production elements like the sound design, the voice acting, uh, both really quite impressive. Sound, The sound design uh, in particular, wow, yeah, yeah. You know, it's quite noticeable. Um, it's quite dynamic. Right? So yeah, it's really impressive. And then finally, that brings me to the opening of the anime of the episode, uh, the opening of the story. And you know, that's a substantial portion of a story, right? The setup, the opening is just so important. And it's quite a distinct choice, isn't it? It's a dream sequence, you know, it's Denji. Um, I mean, I, I guess, you know, I'm assuming it's Denji, but yeah, you know, it appears to be Denji um, going through these streets and reaching towards a door. And then as he reaches out for the doorknob, uh, he comes to, he comes out of it, right? He, he wakes up. Um, now then, I think, you know, there, there are some possibilities here, uh, especially given the fact that it was, it was used as the opening of this entire story of this enemy. Um, you know, there's the possibility, the potential for inconsistent realities even. But yeah, I think that's about it for this one, folks. You know, <laughs> you know, it's essentially this story about a boy and his dog. And you know, there's a lovely moment inside the dumpster, right? I will give you my heart in exchange. Uh, show me your dreams. Wow, <laughs> how touching, how touching. Um, you know, there's a special bond there. And like I mentioned earlier, right, that it feels like that is going to be the heart of this story. Desperate times and desperate measures, even that feels like an understatement, right? Our, our boy Denji is out here selling or was out here selling internal organs, right? And he was getting ripped off because, you know, these amounts are in yen. So that's insane, right? Though it appears that he regenerated, right? Once he kind of merged or fused with uh, Pochta, uh, yeah, his, you know, his eyes back to normal. Um, so I'm guessing he'll get his nut back um, and everything else back as well so you know that's good that's good to see that's good to see but yeah that's about it folks you know denji yeah I'm, I'm so on his side i'm rooting for denji i'm excited to see the progress his climb um but you know there's speed bumps ahead it's not about to be smooth sailing but it's about to be uh interesting nonetheless okay so if you enjoyed that consider dropping a like consider dropping some comments give me your thoughts and if you're interested in full length uh, and of course, the full length is uh, timer based. So you do have to bring your own copy and you sync it, you know, just, you know, open up Crunchyroll and then sync it, right? There's a countdown and then you just hit play, perfect sync. Uh, and then there's also full opacity, right? No filter, no mask, uh, like the one on YouTube. And that's necessary because, you know, it's super risky. Uh, you run the risk of you know, being blocked and getting a strike. So yeah, you know, the, the, the filters, the mask is needed. The opacity mask is needed. Um, but yeah, if, you know, if you are interested in, you know, supporting the channel and also getting the perks, uh, yeah, check out patreon.com. Uh, the links are in the description uh, and the pinned comments. Also, I'm on social media, uh, things like Instagram, Twitter, if that's your thing. 
Right then, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for your time. This time is precious and I do hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy.